Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Matthew Mora and today we're going to be looking at I hope you enjoyed that little b-roll sequence of my brother's dream gaming PC build. It wasn't easy to source all these parts, but luck, patience, and the F5 key were a huge part of this process. He'll mainly be using this for gaming, but he'll also be using it to run some VMs and possibly some video editing if he ever starts his own YouTube channel. Anyways, let's jump into the parts. The motherboard is the Asus ROG Strix B550F with Wi-Fi 6. We were looking for something with Wi-Fi 6 and landed on this B550 board. It's super clean with a black PCB and built-in I.O. shroud. There's a touch of pink across the board that I was a little worried about, but it actually turned out quite nice in the finished product. One downside to this board is that it doesn't have USB-C, so the USB-C port on the case is essentially just for show. On a positive note, I was surprised that this motherboard worked with the 5600X right out of the box, and no BIOS update was necessary. I think this might depend on when the motherboard was manufactured, so definitely watch out for that. It has BIOS flashback, so you could update the BIOS with a USB stick and not need a 3rd gen or earlier Ryzen CPU to do this update. Speaking of the CPU, we went with the 5600X. The 6 cores and 12 threads is definitely more than enough for gaming alone, and I was hoping to put a 5900X in here for his more intensive workloads, but we just couldn't find one. So I actually pulled this out of my own system because I do have plans on upgrading my own rig very soon, so hit that subscribe button if that's a video you want to see. It's sort of old news by now, but the improved IPCs on the new Zen 3 processors have finally leveled the field in gaming. 
To cool the 5600X, we have an overkill 360mm AIO from EK. It's their Elite 360D RGB that comes with 6 EK Varder fans and a hub for a push-pull configuration. We actually bought this with the intention of cooling the 5900X, but it's very quiet and keeps the 5600X nice and chilly at 26 degrees idle and 52 degrees on full load. I think it's one of the newer coolers with a all black CPU block and the EK logo lights up and syncs nicely with the rest of the RGB components in this build. We have it mounted at the top of the case with the three fans exhausting and ended up using the other three fans intaking air at the front of the case. For RAM, we went with the 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z Neo at 36 megahertz. This kit was on sale when we bought them and they were listed on the motherboard's QVL, so it was really just an easy choice. To house the OS and main programs, we have a 500 gig Samsung 970 EVO Plus. We also have a couple of one terabyte crucial drives plugged in the back and tucked away in the second chamber of the case, and he's using these for storage and some other games. The case itself was one of the parts that was a must have for my brother and pretty much made it his dream gaming PC. You've probably seen it a thousand times and it's no stranger to the PC building community. It's the Lee and Lee O11D in black. Man, this case is so gorgeous and I've always stayed away from it because it was used so often, but now I'm just super jealous after building in it myself. The dual chamber design made cable management a breeze and there are so many options for configuring the build. I have the AIO up top with the tubes at the rear for better visibility from the front tempered glass part of the case. I went ahead and ordered an O11D Mini and I'm waiting on that to come in before I start my build. Powering everything up is a Corsair RM850X, fully modular and more than enough juice to power the system up, and we'll still have enough headroom when we put in a 5900X. The stock cables were the only part of this build that sort of threw it off a little bit, especially having to use three 8-pin cables for the GPU. We got lucky with the GPU and only had to wait a few weeks from placing the order to the delivery. We got the EVGA 3080 for the Win 3 Ultra that easily runs any games on his new Gigabyte Ultra Wide Gaming Monitor. It's the latest version with a black trim instead of the red clown lips, so it also ties in very nicely with the whole build. The card is pretty massive and tends to sag a bit, but I think my brother 3D printed a bracket to hold it up. Overall, this build is clean, quiet, and can run anything and everything my brother throws at it. He was super pumped and actually picked it up last week, so we don't have any benchmarks, but you've probably seen the performance from majority of the components anyways in a ton of other videos. But that about does it for this video. I have a few other projects planned similar to this one, so don't forget to hit that sub button if you want to catch any of the upcoming content. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Later days.